Hi, this is Dee Wallace from E.T. and Cujo, and you're listening to Without Your Head. Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by the returning Michael Gross of Tremors, A Cold Day in Hell, available May 1st on DVD, Blu-ray, and video on demand. How are you doing? I am well, Neil. Thanks for having me aboard here. Yeah, thanks for doing it. It's always uh, always awesome to talk to you. So, uh, returning... Thank you. Where are you located, by the way? I'm on Cape Cod in Massachusetts. Oh, I love it. I haven't been out there in years. I spent uh, five years in uh, New England of my, in graduate school and afterwards, and it's always a pleasure to get back to that part of town. Cool. Good. Cool. Yeah. It's a, it's uh, it's nice. Well, actually, I was going to say it's nice, but it's like raining outside and it's gray. But well, I'll pretend it's nice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what was it like to return to uh, Burt Gummer? Especially because last time it was like 11 years between uh, the movies, and this time it's only a couple. Uh, first of all, Bert is, from the very beginning, I love this character. He, uh, he was written, it was, it, to me it was comic genius, just the, 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 what was on the page. And uh, I've never lost that, uh, that sense of fun with him. Um, it's the character, it's the character, his, his uh, comic paranoia, his uh, extremities of obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, his his uh, his complete unbalance, comic imbalance, which which uh, is attractive. Uh, the way he approaches life, I mean, it's just it's just an ex- it, it, it's so extreme that it's all he's always for me a figure of fun and ex- at exploring him. So. Uh, so I really, I really find it, I, I really find it great. I never, you know, all these, you know, when we first had Tremors in 1990, I had no idea it would go this far. I mean, we just, you think it's, everything's a one-off. And uh, I thought that, that ever since we've done a film and it just keeps going. And uh, no one was more surprised than I was that we did a fifth one after 11, 12 years of, 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 uh, of not having one, that it, it, it's appeared again. So uh, it's just, it's just such fun. Mm-hmm. When you talk about um, uh, the the character itself, and uh, you do play it like uh, very serious, which makes it uh, more funny, I think. Uh, are you aware of that? And do you ever almost uh, do you ever crack up any of the lines that you're giving? <laughs> you know, I crack um, very rarely because uh-huh. uh, uh, I know. Uh, I mean, I I crack up. After the yell cut, let's put it right, that way. Right. You know, when I can, I can appreciate it. But you're you're quite right. It's very astute of you to realize that um, playing him seriously makes him even funnier. And I've always said the funniest thing about Bert is that he has no sense of humor. Um, uh, life is deadly serious. Uh, when every no one, he, he can't afford to be lighthearted, and that's one of the comic extremes of the man that he takes takes things so seriously. And uh, and looks down on everyone who doesn't. <laughs> so uh, by the time we we get to the script, by the time we're actually shooting this film, I've been over those lines so much that um, uh, they usually don't make me laugh anymore. And I realize, of course, they must be played for all the seriousness inherent in in in, in Bert Gummer's character. So uh, there, uh, but I will go back to these films years later sometimes and. We're, we're, uh, I went back just to refresh my memory a, a, a couple of within the last week or two to see Tremors one, two, and three, which I hadn't watched for years, and I found I, I, I found myself laughing at some of the Bert character, Bert Gummer moments. Not necessarily the way I, I, to a degree, the way I delivered it, but just the lines themselves, the 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 world view of of such a man just. It makes me laugh, and so that's why I keep returning to it. Uh, so I was able to laugh at a distance. But while I'm doing the work, I'm always concentrating on the fact that nothing is more deadly serious than what Bert's saying at the moment. <laughs> yeah, you you would think you would think a character like that might be um, hard to uh, be likable, but obviously you have to keep the the character likable when you're like the hero of the of the franchise. So uh, how do you keep a character like that so serious and and it gets like people having fun, but yet he is still a likable guy. Um, I th- I think because he's um, there are times when he's perceived as as human. It, that is to say, um, 
he he presents himself as a Superman, and yet he's kindly, like everybody, he he's caught with his pants down from time to time. He prepares himself for one sort of monster and discovers it's another. He, in Tremors Three, he's protected his he's protected his home against a graboid attack by by. <laughs> creating this concrete barrier, underground concrete barrier around his compound, and then he's attacked by ass blasters, you know, <laughs> that come through the ceiling. Uh-huh. You know, so he's, like everybody, he prepares, he prepares, and then he's caught with his pants down, and that's what, I think people see him as genuinely human because he he has, like all of us, he's subject to the, the vagaries of, of, of fate and chance that he can't possibly account for. And that's what makes him funny. And I also think, you know, for as ordinary a guy as he can be at times, he's also very generous. He's never afraid of putting his life on the line mm-hmm. for other people. And I think that makes him very likable. Mm-hmm. He's not a coward. And he's not afraid to, uh, let's say, draw... draw draw danger away from other people by saying I'll take a run and draw this animal away from the rest of you guys. I will take a chance for you. He's not afraid to do that. So in, in, in that respect, I think he's, he's, he has a, he's generous hearted, although he's essentially a misogynist, you know, he doesn't <laughs> care to be around other people, but uh, he will, he will be self-sacrificing at times if need be. Mm-hmm. So I was originally going to ask you where the Arctic scenes were filmed, and then when I watched the specials on the on the Blu-ray, I realized I found out it was filmed in a desert. So uh, what was it like to uh, to wear like parkas and and all these clothes while you're filming in the desert and you know trying to pretend you're cold? I guess when it's I right. assume it would be very hot. You know, <laughs> yeah, it was it, it was odd. There were times it got chilly, but never obviously never cold. And it actually began to work for the story as we were talking about uh, climate change, too. You know, the, mm-hmm. how unnaturally warm it was for a place that was supposed to be cold. And that was, of course, one of the reasons these graboids were uh, emerging from the permafrost, because the ice was breaking up. So, uh, but, you know, this is one of the vagaries of production. We were scheduled to go, go to a place with a lot of snow, a lot of snow. But in fact, there was so much snow the, 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 they determined that the transportation would have been almost impossible. Logistically, uh-huh. it would have been uh, it would have led to many delays, cost overruns, and literally some equipment being able to move on roads and things like that. So, uh, so this was a compromise, and uh, those uh, those uh, um, uh, snowdrifts in the first part of the film are very nicely. Uh, um, are, are, those were sand dunes that stand in for snow, which was beautifully shot and well, you know, well carried off. I think uh, it would have fooled me had I not known. Um, so we had to do some massive adjustments, and that's part of oh, I don't know, part of the uh, part of uh, part of actually having to make your dream come true on film is having to make compromises. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, I didn't know until I watched the special features. I thought it was, you know, somewhere yeah. in the snow. It definitely worked. Yeah, yeah. It was be- beautifully done, I think. Yeah. Well, well, uh, well, 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 taken off, carried yeah. off. There's a lot of action in uh, in this one particularly. Not all of them, but this, there's a lot in this one. Uh, was it a physically demanding uh, a movie? You know, <laughs> to a degree, uh, yes. Uh, it's always physically demanding, which is why... Um, I have to keep very much in shape for these uh-huh. sorts of things, you know, uh, just taking care of myself with, uh, calisthenics and yoga and, um, uh, regular, uh, aerobic exercise. These are parts of how I lead my life and eating properly and not getting obese and all that other sort of uh-huh. stuff uh-huh. because I love doing this work and I love staying healthy for life in general. Um, so, um, it's, it's always, there's always something demanding, uh, which is why I live, when I'm doing these films, I live like an athlete. I, uh, uh, on, on my days off, uh, I don't run around uh, to bars. I don't stay up late. I go to bed early. I mean, I treat it like somebody who would at the Olympics. You know, and you, you say, oh, well, the Olympics are only four weeks long or whatever, three or four weeks long. Huh. And so you don't, 
you don't have to around during the Olympics. You know, you you keep your nose to the grindstone, and that's the same way I am on these things. There's plenty of time to goof off when I'm not on the set. So I don't consider it play time. I consider it work time and um, time to. Uh, well, I guess I just have to be. I have to be very dedicated and. Uh, um, uh, I can't, yeah, I, I, there's no time to play. I don't invite my own wife when I when I, <laughs> when I uh-huh. to come with me because I don't. At the end of the day, I don't want somebody sitting in a hotel room saying, "What are we doing tonight, dear?" Because the answer for me is, I'm learning. I'm taking a shower. I'm getting a meal. I'm learning lines, and I'm going to bed. I'm not here. I'm not here to entertain, and I don't want to be responsible to entertain her. She came out for the last five days of filming. I said, "Okay, okay, let's you know come out to the end." And then we spent another another week because this was in South Africa. But then we spent another week goofing around there and traveling. But I'm all work. I'm very. I guess the work is disciplined. You know, sort of like a. You know, you have to be like a Roman legionnaire. <laughs> you just can't mess around. There's so much, so much work to do, and the schedule is so crazy. And I always hurt myself. I mean, I just do for uh, for all my, for you know, I always wind up gashing myself, my knee open on a rock, or I actually broke a tooth in this one. Oh wow! In tremors, uh, in, in tre- you know, I wound up uh, at the end of one day of filming in a in a dentist chair and. In uh, in Cape Town, South Africa, until ten o'clock at night, so they could repair my tooth, so I could go out and uh, go out, uh, you know, on on camera the next morning. Uh, you know, it's insane things like that. So I had a broken tooth. Uh, I broke a couple of ribs in Tremors Five, and you know, just by taking a fall the wrong way. Uh, you know, I was not. You know, I just didn't. You you have got to do things by the numbers, and I wasn't watching carefully enough, and I didn't prep well enough and I broke a couple ribs but the, there's nothing you can do about that you know I just it was just painful for a for a long time to work you know and because every every breath you take hurts yeah. but uh, you know you just have to give it time so you know you just you have to just stay disciplined and stay keep your eye on the ball you know yeah and yeah. when I was watching Family Ties growing up I never thought that Mr. Keaton would go on to be a uh, an action star yeah that was one of the beauties <laughs> of that was one of the beauties of Tremors, the first one, because it was right on the heels of Family Ties that uh, Tremors came along. And I thought, oh, my God, thank God for this, because mm-hmm. not only does it answer the question, would there be life after Family Ties, but would would I be able to play vastly different characters? And so Tremors was a blessing and has been uh, ever since, that those original people, uh, Steve Wilson and Brent Maddock and Ron Underwood, who were the first uh, writers directors who came came along trusted me with that and took me through the first four and then all th- and then 13 years later to go th- uh, 13 15 years later to come through five and six um it's just been very exciting so i'm uh, you know i've i've been i've been blessed it's that simple bird is the mm-hmm. gift that keeps giving yeah uh, so i have a question about there's a scene where it's uh, you know my balls are, are big as the next it goes on a few things, and it gets to the the Guinness Book of Balls. Uh, how long did, did that? How long did it take to shoot that scene? And were there any other like synonyms thrown in there before you know you finally get to the the Guinness Book of Balls? Um, you know, it, it <laughs> actually came about. It actually came about rather quickly. And uh, to be honest with you, some of that wasn't scripted. The director said, "I like the direction that's taking. Why don't you just riff on that and see what you can come up with?" So, I. I forget what they are because I made them up at the time. You know, I <laughs> right. mean, my balls are made of steel, the Guinness Book <laughs> of Balls, all that sort of thing. And as I look back on it now, I don't know that I'd do it again. Sometimes I don't like, I mean, it's funny, mm-hmm. but I never want to sacrifice the character in some ways. I mean, I think it, I think it works. I think it works, but Bert is also in some ways kind of a prude. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I want to be careful I don't take him too excessively into uh, uh, scatology and things like that. Um, because Bert is kind of old-fashioned in a certain way, too. So I'm, um, I prefer not to, um, not to riff, not to improvise with Bert, because he, he has a very specific way of saying things, a very specific way of looking at life. And I'm afraid if we, uh, if we improvise too much, that I'll, I'll lose Bert, 
you know, I like to go through several drafts of Bert to get him just right, just the way he says things. You know, mm-hmm. I feel I've been denied critical need to know information, things <laughs> like that. You know, uh-huh. Doing the best I can with what I got. Um, you know, all these sorts of things. Just the, he has a way of understatement sometimes. So I'm try, I try to be careful of too much overstatement. In this case, I think it worked. He was trying to get this guy to get over his fear and to uh, to accompany him to to get out to to get safely out of harm's way. And so uh, was trying to inject him with some courage. So I think it sort of worked. But um, I don't know. I always I, I always wind up second guessing choices like that. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't because I don't want to ever lose the tone of Bert. You know, for the I don't want to sacrifice Bert for the sake of a laugh. Yeah. Because ultimately, I think some of that stuff is funny. But I'd rather sacrifice a good joke and stay in character. You know, what yeah. I mean? I'm not saying this is out of character, but it's it's, it's something I'm always watching for. You know what I mean? Any story behind the Cubs hat? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, it's gonna. Di- it, it may disappoint some long-term fans. This was a personal thing. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm a I'm a Chicago boy. I was born and raised in Chicago. And after all those years of striving and disappointment, I said, "Hey guys, how about a bird has a Cubs hat?" <laughs> you know, the, the the Atlanta Hawks was a choice made out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. When, when we did the first Tremors hat, the, the wardrobe person came to me, what do you see this guy wearing? And I said, I see a sports cap. I see a Southern sports team. Pick your Southern sports team. I said, I, pick, I, I see a ball cap with a visor, and it's a sports team and a Southern sports team, and that's all. And suddenly I was staring at, uh, you know, 30 Atlanta Hawks hats were, you know, <laughs> lined up in the, uh, in the wardrobe room. And it's been Atlanta Hawks ever since. And I said, that's just so arbitrary. Who cares? Now, for some people who always want to see Bert in Atlanta Hawks, <laughs> yeah, they'll oh. be disappointed. Oh. For myself, I thought it was fun just, to, you know, the way they keep saying, have you changed teams? No, yeah. just had. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. without, without even trying to explain it, he's suddenly wearing something different, and nobody else, nobody quite knows why. Yeah. And I just thought... It would it would be funny, and I thought it was a character thing too because I could I could see Bert in his isolated way. I mean, the Cubs he hadn't won a World Series in over a hundred years, and I see Bert being sort of on the side of the underdog. And the aside from the fact, fact that I'm a Chicago, and I just thought I could see him siding with these guys who, against all odds, finally won a pennant. Mm-hmm. You know, I just thought it was I don't know. Something Bert like about it, yeah. <laughs> you know, that he'd uh-huh. appreciate that. Yeah. And I really like that it's so, addressed but never explained. <laughs> never explained, you know. Yeah. You don't have to explain it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I think that's a gr- that's a great choice. So the idea was we never. He's just he's just doing it mm-hmm. <laughs> because he's Bert, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, but but thank you very much. I appreciate I appreciate chatting with you, uh, Neil. And I hope your weather improves. And uh, thanks for your candor. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Thanks again. Thanks. And uh, uh, have a good day. <laughs> Thanks. You have a good yep. day. Bye-bye. Bye. This is Danny Trejo, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. Keep listening, or I'll take your head.